Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about the fantasy of Europe becoming independent for Russian gas. Two question marks. Is it really true? Where are we going to go? Now, this video is inspired by a favorite energy blog of mine, a guy called Ewan Means, who um, did a post back in 2014, March 2014, uh, eight, nearly eight years ago, uh, about the fantasy of European gas independence. And um, there's a link uh, which I'll put in the description to his original post. And this is an update on it. And basically, Ewan's key points were that Europe is dependent on Russian gas and will continue to be so for a very long time, basically as long as natural gas is needed. And better relations as Russia needed for European energy security. Now, being a partially of Russian origin, my uh, yet at the Dumas to at the Tosha I also think uh, a decent relationship between Europe and Russia is also in, a, in good ideas. So, has this changed in the last eight years? Short answer is no. And details are uh, the following. So, this is the big picture. So, this is a graph showing European gas consumption in total with all its origin of the sources. So at the bottom on the blue and purple colors are Europe's indigenous production. So that's European Union, EU27, you know, Denmark, Italy, Germany, etc. Then Britain, you can see a very large decline there. Then Norway, which has increased. Then, uh, and then the rest of the EU, uh, Greater Europe in the sky blue color. Then imports from North Africa and Middle East, uh, so Algeria, Libya, and also Iran going into Turkey. Liquefied natural gas exports, as picture of a liquefied natural gas tanker, and the red slice is Russia. So you can see Russian gas is very important. European gas consumption, although it may have peaked just before the Great Recession, it's been going down relatively slowly and tends to go in waves to do with, uh, with seasons. So what about European indigenous gas production? So you've got mainland Europe, EU27 in sky blue, then Great Britain, then Norway in green. So Norway accounts for almost half of um, the consumption. Europe's now producing 41% of the gas it consumes. That's Greater Europe or Europe Plus. So that includes Ukraine and Turkey as well. Um, other production uh, comes from um, United Kingdom, Netherlands, which is mainly the Honingen field, uh, which is going to be shut down due to uh, induced seismicity, uh, small earthquakes due to production, uh, geomechanics, uh, Ukraine, and then all these other countries. Now, it's set to continue declining further. It's been in a declining situation for a long time. Uh, one bright spark in horizon within Greater Europe are some recent gas discoveries in the deep water Black Sea off the coast of Turkey, which will supply the Turkish market. So, but that's still a relatively small sum. In terms of Europe's gas balance, so the blue areas are Europe's production, the red are consumption, and the green line are percentage of imports. So domestic consumption is in the 30s, 40s. Uh, so that's the dark blue, which is the domestic supply, and that's the overall import. So that's BCM per year, billions of cubic meters per year. So you can see Europe is dependent on exports from outside. That's Europe plus. So that includes Turkey, includes Ukraine, includes Great Britain. But some countries are more dependent than others. Uh, so this is a graph from Eurostat where basically a lot of countries in, East, in uh, Eastern Europe, but also some Western European countries, such as France, Belgium, etc., are almost 100% dependent, 100 dependent on, on imports, very little indigenous supply. Uh, that sort of tends to tail off. Um, there are some countries like uh, um, uh, Croatia, Britain, Ireland, that have some of their own um, gas, although they also import quite a bit. And Denmark is the one exporter mainly exporting to its european neighbors in terms of dependency from russia the further east you go the more dependent on russia you are in terms of the eastern europe virtually 100 uh, percent as well as some central european countries the reason is legacy from back in the days of the warsaw pact so where do the imports come from and has this changed much well these are the imports into into europe so russia in red the light green is North Africa, so that's Algeria and Libya by pipelines. That has shrunk. Russia has pretty much stayed constant, with it, but has been shrinking and growing in response to demand. So it's basically that's a demand follower. These thin lines are exports by pipeline from uh, other bits of the former Soviet Union. So that's Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, etc. Although they, some of those countries, particularly Central Asian countries, have been looking for markets within China. Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, etc. And the sky blue is liquefied natural gas. 
So you can see in terms of share, Russia is now down to 54%. 2000 was more than like in the 70s. And most of that has been taken up by LNG, liquefied natural gas. So is LNG going to be able to come to the rescue? Can we just buy all these freedom molecules from the Americans and wherever the people are? Well, maybe, maybe not. This is a graph showing the total consumption of LNG by different European countries. So uh, that's been uh, UK, Turkey, Spain has been traditionally a big importer, France, Belgium, and then the rest of the EU. So a bit of a bulge in 2010-2011, then a fall. To some extent, that was by growth in Asian markets, mainly Japan, take Fukushima taking up, uh, because of Fukushima taking up extra liquefied natural gas, and it's growing back up again. So used to be roughly 25% of the world LNG market went to Europe, fell back again to about 15% in the mid-2010s, uh, now back up to around the 2050s and 2018-19. Uh, but the total LNG buy has been growing, has been growing quite steadily. So you can see now up to nearly 500, million, 500 billion cubic meters per year. So who's been consuming this LNG? Well, it's mostly Asia. Roughly 70% of, of LNG exports go to countries in Asia. So that's Japan. The traditional customers have been Japan, uh, Korea, and Taiwan, the JKT. They've now been joined by India and China, that have become very big uh, importers. Japan's still in the lead with 21%. They're entirely dependent on LNG for their gas. Um, China had, had us have got some domestic gas. It's also getting pipe gas from both uh, Central Asia and also now from Russia, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Korea is LNG dependent. India has some domestic gas. I've worked on some Indian gas fields and, and during, my, during the course of my career. Taiwan has very little. And the blue center of the pie here are the European countries. So uh, that's Spain, France, UK, Turkey, Italy, Belgium, and the remainder. So you can see that um, it's very much dependent on, on uh, Asia. Also, Asians tend to have longer term contracts, whereas Europeans then have shorter term contracts and spot. And that's been a bit of a revolution in the LNG market. So where's the LNG coming from? LNG exporters tend to be now dominated by Australia, um, Qatar, the United States, which has been a big new entrant into the market, Russia, which has also been a big new entrant into the market, Malaysia, Nigeria, Indonesia, and then others. And what has happened is this is where the growth in LNG exporting has come from. So the two big growth areas relative to what has been has been uh, America. So they come from nothing. And then with shale gas, they've now expanded to roughly um, 60 billion cubic meters per year. And then Russia that's exporting in around 40 billion cubic meters per year. Again, expanding from very little, set to expand further, both in terms of America and, and Russia. Australia has also been a big expansion. This is all Northwest Shelf, and this is now includes extra infill in Northfield, Northwest Shelf, new projects like Prelude, plus also the gas seam project, coal seam gas projects in, in Queensland. And this is Qatar, North, Northfield, which is the biggest gas field in the world, basically covers the whole country and extends into Iran. Uh, and that's been coming here. But if you were to take Russian gas exports 2019, try to replace them with LNG, you'll need the entire LNG output of Australia and Qatar to just go over the top of that. Let's sink in a bit. That's an awful lot of LNG that needs to come in to replace Russian gas if you wanted to do it. And you have to take that gas off the market from somewhere else. Very difficult to envisage. But how important is gas anyway? So this is a percentage of primary energy provided from gas. Again, this is data from BP, Statistical Review of World Energy. And I've color coded it by different countries. Now, Ukraine used to be a very big gas dominated country. Um, they were the start of the Soviet gas industry. Now the Ukrainian gas fields are to a great extent depleted. There's not really that much extra potential left, but there's still substantial gas dependency. Great Britain, again, North Sea gas, around 40, 45% of Britain's energy is provided by gas. So that includes electricity, heat, etc. Then Italy, another big gas user. Then other countries that have been a little bit less. So uh, France, Spain, Poland, 
a bit less. Poland uses a lot of coal. Gas density, uh, France tends to use nuclear for electricity generation. And then Turkey growing. So these are large countries between 15 and 42%. So gas is an important part of the energy mix within Europe. Uh, what is gas used for? Uh, this picture from the United Kingdom uh, from the EIA, the American Authority from 2016. So roughly a third for electricity, then industrial uses, commercial, and then residential heating. So 84% of uh, UK households heat, heat uh, their homes by gas. Uh, gas share of total electricity generation, this figures from BP. So there's some slight contradictions with uh, the EIA figures. But here in 2019, UK used, generated 41% of the electricity from gas. Netherlands, a big electricity gas generator, so is Italy. So gas is essential for the economies of Western Europe. But aren't the Russians dependent economically on gas exports? If surely they, you know, they, we may need their gas, but do they need them? Do they need our money? Well, they kind of do, but not as much as you think. This is from 2011. So in terms of GDP, the energy sector consumed 30% of GDP in Russia at the time. It would have changed a little bit since then, since other things would have grown. But gas only consumed 10%. In terms of export shares, gas was 12.5%. In terms of tax revenue for the Russian government, 6.3%. Oil formed the reliance share of both exports and um, uh, tax revenue, less so of the economy. And Russia does actually have a full service economy. It has a significant manufacturing industry, uh, significant agriculture, etc. But all of that is consumed at home. They don't tend to export much in the way of manufacturing because they don't have the competitive advantage they do in energy. Uh, so oil is also part of the global market. So oil can be shipped in tankers to whoever will want to buy it. And Russia produced 12% of the world's oil, second biggest oil exporter. So we kind of depend on that to some extent. And does Russia have other markets for their gas? Well, there's the domestic market and changes within that. But also the Russians have been depending other, uh, developing other spheres. So there's the Power Siberia pipeline going to China, 38 BCM a year. Okay, not as much as uh, the 190 odd that he's giving to Europe, but that's going to expand, that's going to grow. The Yamal LNG uh, terminal up in Northern Siberia with uh, these uh, LNG tankers that can, uh, that can break through ice, 22 BCM a year further growing. Sakhalin in the Far East, again, LNG in the Far East the markets. Other potential pipelines that will go to China, LNG markets that will go to India, Southeast Asia, and other growing markets. So Russia is looking for other markets for its gas. So to sum up, can Europe be independent of Russian gas? Well, basically not for a very long time. Ewan's 2014 analysis is still valid today. And the relationship between Russia and the West has sadly deteriorated even more since then. I'm not going to go into politics. We can all blame everybody else. But for the sake of global security, it would be a good idea to try to improve it. The scale of Russian gas exports are huge and would take almost the combined export volumes of the two biggest LNG uh, producers in the entire world to replace it. So that's we're talking about nearly 40% of the world's entire LNG production very difficult to envisage that happening. There are few alternative near-term sources of gas available in early 22 when I'm making this video. That's not likely to change anytime soon. Now, there are limited supplies from Turkey that could come with these new Turkish discoveries, but that will take some years to develop. And these are the Mediterranean discoveries in Israel and Cyprus have been around for a while. There have been various talks of getting them into, into, uh, into Western markets. Quite how they'll happen, etc., is another question. In the meantime, cost of gas is sought. So there's a graph here showing uh, what uh, price of gas is relative to price of oil. Price of gas in Europe has spiked up to crazy f figures. And this means that Europeans are suffering. Poor Europeans are choosing to heat or eat. And Russian supplies to Europe have decreased. Now, some of that could be politics, Nord Stream 2 pipeline, etc. But, uh, but that's difficult. So the two further outstanding questions are what's going to happen to the future? What's the future for European gas demand, energy transition, moving away from fossil fuels, what's going to happen there? And the Russians will be concentrating on new markets. Will Europe be crowded out? Difficult times. So thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next one.